So let's take some inspiration from the world of cinema to do something like a dolly zoom effect where we can bring the background closer, keeping the subject the same, or push the background back and bring foreground elements in while keeping the subject or whatever we want in the center the same. So strictly speaking, that's not a dolly zoom, but it's like a, a dolly zoom. So the first person to do this apparently was Alfred Hitchcock in the movie Vertigo to get this kind of effect. It's um, sort of a distortion of uh, reality in a really strange way. It's not CGI. It's a very natural result of just uh, moving the lens while moving back or moving closer. So we get that kind of strange feel. So how they would do this using a camera, for example, this is the set of Jaws in 1974. So the camera can either move in, dolly in, while zooming out so it keeps the subject in this case, the actor's face the same size. Or the opposite, you can dolly out while zooming in, keeping the actor's face about the same size because you're zooming in or zooming out while moving. So you get this kind of effect where the background is going to be really distorted, either coming in or moving away, depending on how you do it. So often it's used in ways to kind of create a, an uncomfortable feeling. So we can't really do that, strictly speaking, but here we can just move the background and keep the subject the same and we get that kind of effect, which is a little bit strange, I guess. And maybe if you brought some text in, you get something like this. So it feels a little bit uh, unnatural or uncomfortable. So for example, if you're talking about public speaking, you could say, well, this is a great fear for many people, the idea of putting them on a stage in front of a thousand people. It's very scary for a lot of people. Okay, so how do we do that? Let's say we're talking about solo travel. So here we go from this, we can come in closer, or if we wanted, we could move back. So let's take a look at how we did that. Okay, so I just start with this video, but you could use a photo as well. So that's the bottom layer. And then this is another video with an alpha channel. So it's just the trees, but the background is invisible, so I can use that. And it's actually I only want the, the left side. I don't want this side over here, so I'll just make it a little bit bigger, and I'll do something like this. So again, if we start here, I just used two of them. I just duplicated it. So we have this one on this side, and then we have the other one on the other side. And they have the video in the middle. And then I just duplicate that, and I want these foreground videos to come out. So I just make them much bigger and just put them off screen all the way off. And then I can increase the size of the video by keeping the subject the same, however I want to do it, maybe something maybe something like that, right? So that's the zoom out. So we go from this to that. And then the last thing you do, of course, is to make sure that you have magic move on and under animate, and you can go for about two seconds or so. And I have it set to ease in and ease out. Let's look at a different example. So the situation is something like this. Okay, so that's all in Keynote. So I just started with this photo. So what we can do, we just want the subject, we don't want the background. So just click on the photo, go to Format and Image and Remove Background. And sometimes it works like this where it's pretty well, it's, you know, that's good right there. We can use that. So then we take that and let's say we put it in here, just as an example. So we have her there and then we're going we're gonna to go to larger size, right? So we go from this to that. So on this slide, going from here, here to here, we need the magic move. So we got the magic move in there. We can see how that affects. We want ease or out, ease in or out. It just depends. If we look at the preview, that's okay, but I want to do more. So I want some more trees that move at an even different rate. So to do that, let's go back to this original here. And then I just want to take out these trees and use them twice. So how do you do that? We'll just make it a little bit bigger here. So we can use just the automatic sort of remove. So we, anyway, we go here to image and let's go to format and remove background. And sometimes it really works well where you can just get the, the whole thing that you want, whatever that little element is you want. In this case, it's not as easy. I can get all of this, but I can't get in the under parts of the tree as easily. But I got this part. So what I can do then is say, okay, I'm happy with that. Then go up to Shape and the Pen Tool. And this you don't have to worry. We're going to select this whole tree. Here we don't need to be so specific, but here we can kind of get in 
and do like this, just follow it along, kind of like a Christmas tree. Just go in like that, then across, and just kind of follow the branches. And we can adjust this later if we needed to. Something like that. And here, we don't have to worry about it because we already selected that. Okay, and then we select what we just did with the pen tool and select the image and then go up to Format under Image and Mask with Selection. And there you, you see we have the whole thing. Now, if we don't want this little sky in the back, then we can you know mess with that some more. Just do it again. Remove background. It's going to show everything, but everything is not what we're going to get. So once we, once we say we're done, it goes back to that, right? So anyway, you can hit Remove Background again, and then you can take your time and go in there, if it's necessary. If the background is very similar, it might not be necessary. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? We're not working in Photoshop. We're just working in Keynote or PowerPoint. So it just has to be so good that really people aren't going to notice. Okay, so let's take this tree then and go back to this original one. You can see that, yeah, it fit. maybe we can make it a little bit, just a touch bigger. It's going to move at a different speed. So we can do something like that and maybe take another one and go on the other side, perhaps flip it, you know, some, something like that. And then we go take these and copy those, and we're going to move them, right? So they go from this to this, and let's have them move, but they're going to move at a little bit different speed. The background's coming closer, maybe something like that. You can, it just depends however you want to do it, but it should look different now. Something like that, right? There's different elements moving at different speeds. So it gives us this parallax effect, which is what we have here. This 